Boogeyman Ben. Hey everyone, it's Boogie Man Ben. Hope everyone's doing well. Wanted to say Happy New Year to all of my followers and my subscribers. I'm um, just uh, so thankful for the continued support of Boogie Man Ben's Horror Zone. Um, 2014 has been a really rocky year. Um, the year started out with a lot of promise and a lot of things just didn't work out. Um, and I, I'm not the only one that's feeling the same thing about this year. I know a lot of people have had hard times this year. And I know that uh, 2015 is going to be a very prosperous year. A lot of good things coming in 2015. I have a lot of, uh, you know, um, just positive thoughts. And I know it's going to be a, a really better year than 2014 was. Um, for my typical um, end of the year uh, video, um, I like to do a top 10 of favorite movies. I will also do some honorable mentions. And I'm not going to do a separate, like, horror and, you know, regular movies. I want to put them all together because... I love all types of movies, um, even though that this is primarily a horror channel. Um, I like comic books and action and um, all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm just going to put everything together, talk about my favorite films of 2014, and I hope everyone looks forward to this. Please stay tuned. So before I get into my favorite movies of this year, I just want to again say thank you to all the people that have continued to support Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. Um, my subscription rate is up to 754 subscribers, which is tremendous for me. Um, it means the world to me. And uh, going into the new year, I plan to do a shout-out video to all the people um, that have continued to support me. Some of the people that you know I've uh, gotten to know and that uh, have been following this page uh, and this channel for quite some time now. I mean, I'm going on my sixth year of, of having this uh, video channel, and it's just it means so much to me and uh you know it, i i love having this outlet to talk about movies and 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 toys and collectibles and and uh personalities that i get to meet and there's some really cool conventions that are coming up in 2015 i am going to the walker stalker con which is going to be at the end of this coming month and end of january beginning of february and Robert England is going to be there. Um, it's going to be pretty pricey to meet him, but uh, it's one of the things um, I've been wanting to do. Uh, he's he's an actor that I've looked up to for, I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street came out 30 years ago, which is amazing. Uh, but since I was, you know, 11 years old when I first discovered, you know, in 1985 was when I saw the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And, uh, you know, I've been a fan of Robert England's ever since. And this is one of the items on my bucket list that I want to cross off. I got to meet Kane Hodder and Heather Langenkamp this year, which was uh, one of the greatest thrills for me meeting both of them. But I also got to meet Tyler Maine and Josh Stewart and, and Nick Principe, who played Chrome Skull. I mean, I, I met some really tremendous, um, you know, uh, genre actors that I've looked up to for a long time. And Robert England is right up there. And uh, not only is the Walker Stalker Con coming up, but I just found out that Kirk Von Hammett is having another uh, Festive Evil. And the one this year that he's doing is going to be in uh, San Jose. And it's going to be the weekend before my 41st birthday. So I, um, that's going to be my birthday gift. I already told uh, my wife and I'm going to tell the rest of my family that's what I want. I want money to go to that. I have no idea who's going to be there. I don't even know where the venue is going to be yet. But he did announce, uh, Kirk Von Hammett did officially announce the dates. It'll be April 10th, 11th, and 12th. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but what I'm going to do first is talk about my honorable mentions uh, for uh, 2014. So these four films are uh, ones that didn't make my top ten, but they were um, some favorites of mine this year. Uh, the first one on my list is Captain Winter America Soldier. The Winter Soldier. Um, I absolutely love this film, and I actually really enjoyed the first Captain America film. I know a lot of people, I'm kind of in the minority on that one, but I really love uh, movies that are set like during World War II. So I think that was kind of another reason why I gravitated toward that one more than others. 
Um, but this movie is fucking kick ass. It's a terrific sequel. Um, I think it's 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 so much more than just a, a superhero film. It's got you know a lot of uh, cool elements to it. It's got a fantastic cast. I mean, Robert Redford's in it. Uh, of course, you have Chris Evans, who's fantastic as, uh, as Captain America. You got Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. You got the gorgeous, fucking beautiful Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. And just a, an excellent story, yeah. terrific action. One of the best films I saw all year, um, Captain America the Winter Soldier. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, the next film on my list is X-Men Days of Future Past. This was another terrific film. Um, I've always been a fan of the X-Men movies. I wasn't a big X-Men comic book collector when I was a kid, but I was a big fan of like Nightcrawler, Wolverine, um, those characters. Um, I don't hate on the uh, X-Men films that came out after X-Men 2. Um, X-Men 3 never really bothered me that much. I do think it's a it's a lesser film when stacked up against the others. I also wasn't a huge fan of the uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. I mean, it was okay. Um, I did like The Wolverine, which, which came one, out this last This one was year. just fantastic. Um, any film that deals with time travel, I've always been fascinated by. Um, but I just think the elements work so well in this. You have the cast of the first three X-Men films mixing in with the cast of X-Men First Class, and it's seamless. And I think it was great that Brian Singer was able to come back and direct this. Uh, just did a fantastic job, and I think it's just one of the best films this year. Absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait for X-Men Apocalypse. I, if they can get you know the same flow going as they have with this one, I think it's going to be a tremendous uh, film, and I can't wait to see that. Uh, the next film on my list is a comedy, and it is 22 Jump Street. Um, I was a huge fan of the first film in this series, 21 Jump Street. Now, growing up in the 80s, of course, I grew up with the original television series that these films are based off of. And when I first heard that they were going to make uh, the original 21 Jump Street into a comedy, um, I was kind of skeptical just because, again, you know, I love the original series. Um, kids growing up now might not understand, you know, they, they think probably think it's a really silly premise. You know, these kids that obviously are not teenagers posing as teenagers as undercover and they're undercover cops, things like that. But um, it really worked for me as a kid. And, you know, I think it's just, you know, times are different. Um, but the... Um, the first movie blew me away. Uh, I thought it was one of the funniest films um, that came out that year. And part of me, uh, you know, I actually was surprised that they were going to do a sequel. But I still think that 22 Jump Street blows the first movie away. Um, on repeat viewings, uh, the first time I saw this movie, I died laughing. The second time I saw it, I laughed even harder. Third time... I'm like, it's fantastic. The funniest film of the year, in my opinion, was 22 Jump Street. Now, one film that's also one of my honorable mentions is the film As Above, So Below, which was a found footage style horror film that came out, I believe it came out Labor Day weekend. Um, I didn't get to see it in the theater, but I just watched it on On Demand a couple of days ago. And I didn't know what that film was going to be like. I thought, you know, I'm not, I've said it in many videos past and I won't repeat myself too much, but, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the found footage horror but for some reason, As Above, So Below really worked for me. Um, also found out that, you know, it takes place in the catacombs underneath Paris, that they actually shot some of the film in the actual catacombs. And uh, I think it just, the, the whole environment just really added to the tension in that film. Uh, it was really well done. My wife and I watched it. It scared us really. It, it was a really scary film. Um, one of the scariest found footage films, I think, since Blair Witch. And you know me, I, I'm pretty honest when it comes to uh, found footage films. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I have to put it on my honorable mentions. I actually was really surprised. And it is a movie I will be picking up. Okay, so on to my top 10. Uh, starting with number 10, we are going to go with Tusk, which was uh, Kevin Smith's uh, it's a it's it's really hard to describe what this film is. It's got horror. It's got uh, comedy. It's it's a it's a weird film, but it's a film that I loved, and I think I loved it because it's so different. And I've said before, I read all of these things about people bitching about Hollywood not doing anything original. That everything is by the numbers. It's you know no one's taking chances anymore. And here comes Kevin Smith with one of the strangest horror titles and horror subjects I've ever heard or seen. And this movie just was, it was jaw dropping how different it was. And it's not a movie for everybody. I mean, when I saw it, there was very few people in the theater. I don't even think my wife was a huge fan of it, but I loved it for its originality, 
for trying something different and uh, for, you know, just a tremendous cast in it as well. I mean, I've always been a fan of Justin Long. Um, I really respect Michael Parks uh, and all the films I've seen him in. And, uh, you know, Haley Joel Osment was in this and he did a terrific job in this. And I just, like I said, it's just, it's so different and so out there that I just, it, it, it was a movie that just stuck with me after I saw it. And uh, it's one of my, I just think it's one of the best films I saw all year. So number 10 on my list is Tusk. Now, number nine on my list is a movie that's still in theaters, and it is The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. Um, I just saw this movie uh, uh, over the Christmas break, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a it's a fantastic conclusion to the Hobbit trilogy. A lot of people felt like uh, Peter Jackson didn't need to stretch the source material into three movies. I think it works well. I didn't think uh, that it worked as well as the second installment, Desolation of Smaug. I still think that's superior. Um, but, you know, it still had some great action, great acting, um, tremendous special effects. The battle scenes are just fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it's number nine on my list. Fantastic film, Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. Number eight on my list is the remake of The Town That Dreaded Sundown. It's another movie that I don't have yet. I haven't even heard anything about uh, when that will be released on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, that movie was completely underrated, and I really am pissed off that it did not get a theatrical run. Uh, now, I did not see Ouija, and I know that Blumhouse Pictures put that one out as well. I was surprised that they put that one out and not uh, Town That Dreaded Sundown, because most people, and like I said, I, I always uh, judge things for myself, but a lot of people are putting Ouija as one of the worst films of the year. So, And a lot of people are putting Town That Dreaded Sundown as one of the best horror films of the year. So I'm like, where, where was the, the disconnect there? Why wouldn't they put something out that was a superior product? on the marketplace and the only thing I can think of is because Ouija is more of a title that they can sell than The Town That Dreaded Sundown but um, I think The Town That Dreaded Sundown remake was fantastic um, I was blown away by how well it was made it, I think it's far superior to the original uh, film that came out in the 70s and I love the fact that it's not a sequel that it's not a remake it's that it's kind of it's its own thing that's set in a world where these crimes really did happen and where the original movie really exists. I thought that was really original, and um, it's very scary. And, uh, you know, I was actually freaked out after I watched it. So, yeah, number eight on my list. Number seven on my list is Compound Fracture. Um, I talked about this film earlier in the year. Um, I had the honor of meeting uh, Tyler Mann this year. Um, I met Derek Mears several years back, back in 2010. Uh, both guys are really awesome, and this film was really well done, and it was a labor of love for Tyler Mayne. Uh, you know, he put it out through his own production company, and uh, I thought it was really well done. I thought the cast was fantastic, the mood was there, the, the music was fantastic. It just really uh, shows that you don't need a huge budget to make an effective, scary movie. Number six on my list is Godzilla. Um, I had an absolute blast with this film, and I know a lot of people were disappointed in this a bit because Godzilla is not in it as much as some people thought he would be, um, but I love the way that it was done. I mean, it was effective. I thought the battle scenes were fantastic. Um, I liked the build-up to, to the conclusion where, you know, you get the epic battle. I, I just, you know, it, it worked for me. There was nothing about this film that was boring. Um... I thought that the look of Godzilla was fantastic because he looked like Godzilla. Just, you know, he looked like a modern version of the original Godzilla. He didn't look like he did in the uh, Roland Emmerich 1998 film, which I was never a huge fan of. Um, so, yeah, I had a blast with this film. I th think it's, it's completely underrated. I am looking forward to the sequel. And uh, I think people that haven't seen it because of, you know, mixed word of mouth should give it a chance. So, yeah, number six on my list is Godzilla. Number five on my list is The Expendables 3. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've talked about this movie quite a bit. I've talked about the, you know, there was a, I did three videos this year on The Expendables 3. Uh, first one I did was on the fact that it was illegally downloaded, then I did one on the theatrical release, and then I did one on this unrated Blu-ray that came out uh, this past November. And uh, yeah, I actually had a blast with this film. I love the Expendables films. Um, this one doesn't rate as high as part two for me, but I still love it, and I've loved it more on repeat viewings. I do think the unrated cut is superior to the PG-13 version. Um, it's just got a little bit more grit to it. Um, but uh, I hope that they have learned their lesson and when they do Expendables 4, which I've heard rumors about that, uh, you know, they've, they've already talked about some of the cast that's going to be in it, but I hope when they do the Expendables 4 they make it an R rating, like the first two films, which were hard R ratings. Um, um, even though I don't like this one as much as Expendables 2, I still think it's a fantastic ride. 
excellent actors in it. It was great to see Wesley Snipes in it. Um, I think Mel Gibson was the best villain in the Expendable series. Uh, he was terrific in this film. And, uh, you know, I just love Cy Stallone and, and everybody else in this. So, um, yeah, number five on my list is Expendables 3. Number four on my list is The Equalizer. Um, I just watched this film three days ago and was blown the fuck away. Um, I've always been a fan of Denzel Washington. I think he's one of the best actors. Um, and uh, I love the film Training Day, uh, directed by Anton Fuqua, who actually directed this. Anton Fuqua also directed one of my favorite films from last year, which actually, was Olympus Has Fallen. This movie just kicked ass every sense of the word. A lot of critics aren't even putting it on their lists, and I'm surprised because I think it works in every... Every part of it just worked so well for me, and it was the best action film I saw this year. Um, people that have not seen it, check this movie out. It's fantastic. Number four on my list is The Equalizer. Number three on my list is Oculus. Um, another film that I went into with no expectations, just wanted to see a scary film, and oh my god, this movie just blew me away. I had no idea what I was in for, and this movie mind fucked me like I've never been mind fucked. This is one of the best horror films I've seen in a long time. Um, I would put this next to Sinister as one of my favorite horror films in the last 10 years, um, along with The Conjuring, which is another terrific film that came out last year. And I think that more people need to be talking about this film. This film did not get nearly as much love as it deserved. It's fantastic. It's disturbing. It gets inside your head and doesn't leave. And it is very scary. This very movie subtle stuck way. with me for a long time. Um, it also has a terrific soundtrack. Um, the score is fantastic. Um, people that have not seen this film need to check it out. It is such a good film. So number three is Oculus. Fantastic horror film. Number two on my list is a film, again, that I do not have on DVD or Blu-ray yet. It's supposed to be uh, released, I believe, in the next few weeks. And it is Gone Girl, starring Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike, directed by the amazing David Fincher. Another film blew me away. Um, I didn't read the book. Um, my wife had read the book, so she knew a little bit more about what was going to happen. Um, and that film was just fantastic. fantastic. Film. If you have not seen it, please check it out because it is one of the best films I've seen in a long time. So number two on my list is Gone Girl. And last on my list, my number one film for 2014. And this was hard. I kept going back and forth between a couple in my top five. But my favorite film was Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I haven't talked about this film on this channel um, but this film was, is, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to say it. This film is my favorite Marvel movie. Now I know in the past I've said, I love the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk is my favorite superhero. Love the Avengers. Um, like I said, I love Captain America, but this film for me, this film reminded me of an um, 80s This film. film has a lot of heart. It's it's got a lot of great humor in it. It's got a fantastic cast. Um, I just think this movie is, is so different from the, the Marvel films that we've seen before. It's just it's it's got like, its own personality. You know, James Gunn, it has his personality. It's It's got its own personality. It doesn't feel like the other Marvel movies that have come out. Not to say that they're not good, but this one is so great because it's so different. And it feels like an 80s movie with the special effects of now. And that's why I like it so much. And the music is fantastic as well. I mean, I think the soundtrack for this is just terrific. And I knew from like the first 10 minutes of this movie that it was gonna be fantastic. And I'm so, so right about it. Um, and I'm surprised that more critics don't have this as their top pick for the year. A lot of them are picking it, putting it in their top tens, and it's usually ten or nine or something like that. And I'm like, you know, for a film that was so much fun, that brought joy to so many people, why can't this be the number one film of the year? For me, it's like every time I watch this film, I have a huge smile on my face. It's just fantastic. Number one, best film of the year, Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's my favorite superhero film of all time. So that is it, my friends. This is my last video of 2014. I'm so glad that this year is ending. And I have so much uh, hope for 2015. I think it's going to be a fantastic year. Um, I wish everyone that has supported this channel the best. I hope everyone has a happy and safe new year. And believe me, I got some really cool things that I will have coming in 2015. And again, thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a great evening. Take it easy. Take care. Peace.